Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be focusing on how I create these nice gradient backgrounds using coloured pencils and zest it solvent. These are great backgrounds for making your pet portraits really pop off the page and have an impact. So first step, because I have used a graphite paper to transfer my outline, I am just going in with a putty eraser to get rid of any kind of bits that might have stuck to the page that I don't want there. This is important to do so that the graphite isn't going to be mixing with your colour pencils when it comes to adding the solvent. I'm working on pastel matte paper in the colour sand. I really like this paper, it's a nice mid-tone um, and it's like a, a warm mid-tone as well whereas the mid-grey tone one is also a mid-tone but it's a bit more of a cool tone. So if I'm working on a warm coloured dog I like to use the sand tone because it gives me in that gets me in the warm kind of mood. <laughs> so first of all I'm just going in with a Caran d'Ache white coloured pencil. I really like the colour, the Caran d'Ache pencils for this method because they've got a very kind of soft texture which lends itself really well to using with the zest it solvent because it turns into like a really creamy almost paint like substance. I'm also using the Derwent wipe here as well, it's, it's quite a similar texture to the Caran d'Ache pencils but it's a little bit harder. I like to mix different um, brands of pencils because they've all got different qualities that lend themselves to different kind of techniques and areas, but I really like these two pencils for this technique. The Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils are a really nice alternative as well if you can't afford the Caran d'Ache luminance because they are extremely expensive. I never thought I'd be spending almost £4 on a single pencil, but there we go. You pay for the quality, I suppose. Although the Pablo range is just as good, I feel. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing a radial, like circular shape around this dog. I like to concentrate most of the highlights around the kind of mid area, like the the head area and like the, the midsection in the drawing. Um, because this Basset Hound had very long lovely ears, I am also taking into account the shape of the dog and because this isn't just a head and shoulders portrait, which is what I usually do, it had the, the legs and feet in it as well. So um, yeah, I was just kind of thinking to myself where I want that kind of atmosphere to be coming from and radiating out from. So I kind of went for a very even glow in this one. But if it is just a head and shoulders portrait, I like to do the glow coming from a bit lower down rather than higher up because then you're putting the emphasis on the kind of the level area of the dog, if I'm making any sense at all here. I like it to kind of look like they're coming out from the glow and not being swamped by it. So I used to do it very like central around the head area and above the head, but I tend to like the effect more now that it's a bit lower down. So this is the Pablo, it's a warmish grey tone, I'll put the exact pencil on the screen. As I said, the Pablos are a really nice pencil for this technique as well, they've got that nice um, creamy texture when it comes to blending them with the solvents. So I'm just filling up the rest of the paper with this, um, it's very important to get your base tones down first because you want to fill up the tooth a little bit when it comes to doing this method. If you try and use the solvent on top of paper that hasn't been, um, that hasn't got enough pencil pigment on it, it's just not going to give you that smooth blend. So for our base tone, I'm using this grey as it's like a nice neutral base and then I'm going to add some warmth over the top with like brown tones and beige tones. So I'm just being very loose with this, I'm not being too perfect. It doesn't matter because we're literally going to be blending it all out with a paintbrush as if it's paint. So there we have the brown pencil, I don't actually know which one this is, it's a Faber-Castell pencil. At this point I was kind of just experimenting with what works and what's going to give me that tone that I want and it is all just very much about experimentation. So I'm just using some browns on top of this, some Pablos as well, but you can use whatever tone you want to get that desired colour and desired effect. So I get a lot of questions about whether you can use solvent and colour pencils on paper other than pastel matte. 
which to be honest I wouldn't recommend um, I have tried it very loosely oh sorry I'm just going in with the zest it solvent here um, and a synthetic watercolor paintbrush I'm saturating the paintbrush to quite a good level but wiping off the excess on the side of the pot because I don't want it to be massively soaking <laughs> I just want it to be a nice even covering of the solvent so it can blend out really nicely and I'm just going in like back and forward motions to really rub that pigment into the paper and create that painterly effect but yeah anyway as I was saying um, some people ask if they can do this technique on papers like Fabriano hot press watercolour paper I have used solvent quite loosely on that paper very sparingly and it works to an extent but I would not recommend doing this technique on paper other than pastel mat pastel mat has a very tough surface it's going to take lots and lots of layers before you can feel the tooth of the paper whereas the watercolour papers like the Fabriano for example they're really nice for doing detail work but I've always preferred the pastel mat for colour pencil because I can get so many layers on it and I can also use the solvent to make like a painterly look and also speed up the process sorry if you can hear motorbike and the fan next to me it's like 38 degrees in in the um, UK right now we're having a heat wave so I cannot sacrifice overheating for the quality of this audio I'm sorry but hopefully you can hear me fine so now I'm on to the white section I like to blend out the mid-tone area the gray area first and then clean my brush off completely so there's none of that pigment on it from the darker area I just wipe it off on like a, a paper towel and then go back into the solvent and that cleans the brush nicely so I will make each area nice and saturated with that zest it solvent and then when it comes to blending them in the middle it's really easy because both of the areas are already very blended and wet so it's almost just as easy as blending paint really. You can experiment with the brushes you use. Later on in the video I'll be using a kind of dagger shaped brush and that's just for the larger areas to blend out at the end. But I do prefer these little brushes because they give you more control around the edges of the portrait. I definitely um, recommend the synthetic brushes though over any the other types of brushes because they just they're designed for watercolor so they um, dispatch the dispatch is that the right word disperse the solvent really nicely so as you can see here I am blending in the middle and I'm kind of just going back and forwards so I'm using a back and forwards motion with my hand but I'm also traveling from the highlight to the mid-tone to really get that blend. The nice thing about this method as well is that once it's wet you can still go in with the pencils. So as you can see there I went back in with a white pencil just to brighten up the glow a bit more. And once the paper is already wet those pencils are going to blend really nicely and easily into the paper. And I use this technique a lot for the actual portrait as well. If you want to see the rest of this Ernie portrait, the Basset Hound, I'm going to have a full tutorial on my Patreon. This was such a fun portrait to do. I think I'm going to release some um, shorter videos for YouTube as well. Apologies for my absence on YouTube, I think I've just been very focused on getting some good um, content on my Patreon so that, people wet, so that when people go on it they've got like stuff to watch already. And when it comes to doing the commissions and also doing the Patreon, YouTube tends to fall down to the bottom of the um, responsibility pile, but I'm going to try and be more active on here from now on, because I love the community on here as well. And thank you all for your comments on my graphite videos, it's really appreciated. Some of them have got thousands of views now and I didn't think that was going to happen, so thank you. 
So I'm now going in with a, it's like an oyster white. It's got a little bit of a yellow tone to it. I really like to add a yellow tone to the glow, whichever colors I'm using, because it kind of just makes it pop a little bit more. I find that when you just use the white, it can look slightly flat. So once I've got the white down and I've got the tone down, I like to then go in and add a different color, whether it be like a light pink or a light yellow just adds a little bit of interest to that area. It was quite a hot day whilst I was doing this portrait, so the solvent was drying a little bit quicker than usual. It normally takes around half an hour to fully dry, but um, for this background I wanted it to stay wet, so I kind of just kept going over the areas and keeping it moist for as long as possible, so that if I had to make any changes later on, like I'm doing here, so I'm adding more white, it's easily blendable because once it's dried it's very hard to then go over the top if you know what I mean because it's really you won't be able to blend in with the colors that are already there because it's like sealed into the paper so just be mindful of that another thing to watch out for is when you are creating your drawing after doing these backgrounds with solvent. Be very very careful not to drip solvent onto the background which I did so many times on this portrait and I thought it was ruined at one point but I managed to save it. So if that does happen to you just take a look in the top right corner um, basically just take a tissue like a toilet roll tissue and just rub it really hard for quite a while um, you need to do this as soon as it hits the paper because otherwise it will dry and leave a massive um, dark splodge on your paper. So I basically just really dry it out with the tissue and kind of blend it at the same time with the bits around it. And miraculously it worked. <laughs> I did this about four times in this portrait. But um, yeah, thank god for this tissue. As you can see, the bits of the tissue are coming up on the paper, but you can just brush them away really easily, so it didn't make a difference. But yeah, try not to do that. Be a bit more careful than I am with said solvent. So onto the actual solvent I'm using, which I probably should have covered at the beginning. It's called Zest It Pencil Blend and it's a solvent that's specially designed for coloured pencils. Some people ask if you can use like Gamsol paint thinner for this same technique, and you definitely can. Um, but because the zest is specifically designed for coloured pencils, I find that it tends to create a better um, consistency when you mix it in with the coloured pencils. It's a bit more kind of thick and waxy rather than the Gamsol, which tends to make it a little bit more watery. Um, but you can definitely use it still if you can't get hold of Zest It Pencil Blend and any kind of paint thinner really. I've only ever tried Gamsol other than Zest It so I know that that's actually okay to use. But this is definitely my preferred one. It must be really annoying for these for people who live in different countries. I know that these art materials are really easy to get hold of in like the UK and America. But in places like um, some places in Europe, I know that they're really hard to get hold of, which I find is really unfair. I've got a patron who sends her husband to the UK. <laughs> she doesn't actually send him to the UK to get the paper, but while he's in the UK for business, she gets him to get some. Um, pastels and pastel mats so that's handy but I don't know why there's such an unfair distribution of these art materials so yeah just use whatever you can get whether it be zest it or gamsol so I'm speeding this up now because I've showed you the technique I think you can kind of see what I'm doing now it will be a bit boring to literally watch paint dry, so I hope this is an okay speed for you to follow. I try to minimise the amount of paintbrush strokes that you can see, and this brush is really helpful for that. If you're finding that you're getting too many paintbrush strokes, I would switch to a bigger brush. 
And when the solvent is a little bit more dry, these brushes can really come in handy to kind of dry, dry blend it. Not dry because it's still a little bit wet, but a bit drier than it was originally. And I think that was from... It was just a, it's a dagger brush from Jackson's Art. I think it's like a half an inch one. But yeah, just use what you have to hand. Brushes aren't super important for this, to get specific ones. So just to recap, I am covering the entire surface with that grey colour to fill the tooth of the paper with a nice neutral base tone. And then going over with the warmer colours, but this will depend on which kind of colours that you want for your background. So if you wanted a blue background, you'd put on top blues, obviously. But I like the background to be a little bit more muted than colourful, so I always start with a grey. I find starting with a pencil that's lighter than the colours you put on top as well really aids in blending. So unfortunately I only filmed the first bit of this shadow and the rest of it has disappeared. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here with this shadow. I went in with a Derwent greyish violet toned pencil, quite a light pencil as the base tone and now I'm going in with a Derwent dark brown to get that depth of that shadow in the, in the shadow. <laughs> and I'm now going over the top of it with a warmer toned brown. A good tip if you're struggling to blend out any areas is to put a colour that's lighter on top of a darker colour. And that will really help to make the colour nice and milky when you blend it out with the solvent. This background probably took me about an hour, so it's quite a quick technique. Well, it might be quick depending on how fast you normally work. I'm a very slow worker, so for me that's quite fast. So as you can see there, I put the grey over the darker brown shade there. And that was to aid in blending it into the um, lighter tone there. And I'm still going with those back and forth motions in quite small movements now because I don't want to cover any of the outline. So here is the finished piece all dry. And here is the finished drawing with the background as well. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial guys and I hope you've learned something. Let me know below if you did. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As I said, this full tutorial for this Basset Hound is going to be over on my Patreon channel if you're interested. Um, hope to see you there and I will see you in the next video. Happy drawing!